Good morning and welcome. Did you guys get some donuts and coffee? They were delicious. Thank you to all who set that up, especially to Chef Kat and all that she did for us. I'd like to welcome you to St. Paul's. I know we have some guests with us this morning, and, and you are so welcome. After the service, I hope you will join us in the fellowship hall for our fellowship time. Um, we'll be blessing our, our preschool staff, welcoming our preschool board, honoring those who have served in the past, and blessing backpacks today. So it's a full agenda. I'm glad you guys brought your backpacks. So... Um, just a couple things to lift up today. You'll have an insert in your bulletin that reminds you uh, that this Thursday is the International Day of Peace. And this church is part of an interfaith group that organizes an observance of it in the park, um, Woodward Park. This Thursday at 6 p.m., we'll have speakers from many different faiths reflecting on peace, um, others, a couple other speakers, and refreshments. But it is, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. We are called to be peacemakers. And that doesn't mean an absence of violence. It's talking about wholeness. And this year's theme is an action toward peace. So I invite you to think today and every day, how can you be a peacemaker? And I, I would recommend that you look at the verses from Micah to um, love mercy, do justly, and walk humbly with your God as a good place to start. So, um, uh, Jeannie is, is part of the doorkeepers group here at church on Fridays around 8.30 they begin and they're responsible for all the beauty that you see here. They help take care of, of our grounds. She's telling us that there's a fig tree that's in the courtyard and it's full of figs. I've been enjoying the figs during the week. You're welcome to come and look and take some figs and um, bless, be blessed by them. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes, uh, uh, Steve is reminding me, the Holy Spirit spoke to Steve after yes, last week's sermon, and he did, he's doing something now. Every Sunday, he's going to have uh, some bags of food, basically what we would give out at the time of the food pantry, available for anyone who needs it. It's at the back of the narthex, um, so after worship, um, just find Steve, and he'll be able to help you out. If you know someone who needs food, let them know and, and talk with Steve to see how we can get it to them. All right, now let's prepare for worship. I invite you to, to sit up and put both feet on the floor and your hands relaxed by you. And let's take a deep breath in. And as we breathe in, let's breathe in that peace that God brings us. And as we breathe out, let go of whatever worries you brought here today. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's continue our worship in music.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please join with me with the opening prayer. Beloved Lord Jesus, the church is not a building or an institution, but your people. It is also a place of prayer and compassion. Help us to trust in you and worship you in simplicity and trust. Instill in us a new spirit and inflame us with a love that burns deep and ignites other hearts with friendship and peace. Come among us today and remind us of all that you taught through your spirit. Amen. Now, let us stand as we are able and join together in our hymn of praise forever.
peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us stand and exchange signs of God's love and reconciliation with one another. So this is not only back to church Sunday, it's back to school Sunday. And we are uh, recognizing and celebrating our preschool in particular, but all the children and teachers as well. So I've invited Michelle Brown, um, our preschool board president, to say a few words about the board. Um, so I have been fortunate to be a lay member for church on the board. This is my fifth year, my second year as president. And it has been such a blessing. I started when my kid was, my youngest was still in preschool and gone through and seeing all these kids grow up, um, being there to support our amazing staff. And it's just been a labor of love. Um, Cause I was there through COVID and it's, it was crazy time, but we are just, the, the school is thriving. We had our back to school night on Friday and just, all of the parents, all the staff, just the whole vibe was just so amazing. So thank you to everybody here who's either part of the preschool, was part of the preschool, you know, um, just, we just appreciate it so much. And over the years, we've had some great board members. We have one here today. She was um, former last year. Her name is Sue She was another church of representative to the board. So I wanted to bring her up to um, acknowledge her. Is she still here? or bring it back to her, here, bring that back to her. That's just a little uh, token of appreciation for your hard work. I think I, I, I appreciate your loving heart, your kind spirit, everything that went through um, to make the preschool a better place. And uh, currently we're restructuring our board, so we have um, members from the um, finance committee, the uh, staff parish from trustees, we have from Family Ministries and a lay member, and so um, I'm just really excited for the, what this year has already brought and what we can continue to bring in the future. So will all of those who are current, uh, the new members of the board, come forward, please? We also have um, staff that will be on the board as rotating staff person. So I'm glad that Nicole, Nicole and Michelle and Angie are up here. So, all right. So maybe y'all can just gather a little closer together. And I will offer this blessing for our new board. So please pray with me. Dear friends, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of God for leadership in our preschool. This ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligation and challenge you to offer your best to the Lord, to the children and teachers, and to our ministry in the preschool. Almighty God, pour out your blessings upon these servants who have taken on the challenge of leadership through our preschool board. Grant them grace to give themselves wholeheartedly in your service. Keep before them the example of our Lord who welcomed and blessed the children. Guide them in their work. Reward their faithfulness with the knowledge that through them your purposes are accomplished. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now to all of you who continue to support our preschool. Dear friends, rejoice that God provides laborers for the vineyards. Will you do all you can to assist and encourage them in the responsibilities to which they have been called, giving them your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers? If so, please say, we will. We will. We will. All right. Thank you very much.
So now we get to bless our teachers, our educators. And while, yes, it is the um, preschool teachers, we want to invite all educators. Let us recognize those who've responded to the call of God to become workers in our preschool, to teach, to administer the work of teaching, to support the work of teaching our ministries of Christ among us. Those called to these ministries need our loyal support and prayers. So this is specifically to the preschool staff. You have recognized God's call in your lives. Will you endeavor to develop your gifts for teaching so as to nurture the children in your care? Will you be faithful to the task, taking seriously the commitments of time and talent? Will you take seriously your role as learner, seeking to grow as a teacher? There's a response in your bulletin. Why don't you come up here, Lene, so you can lead us. Oh, yes, it's on the, the screen as well. All right. We have heard that God has called us to teach and respond to that call. We teach trusting in God's promises to support, sustain, and encourage us with the gifts and the mission of the past. We teach relying on prayer in the presence of the Holy Spirit, we teach depending on this congregation to die for the so now, and, and this will go for all of you who are up here, we're going to anoint you and pray for you. So I got three people who are, who are going to do anointing, including me. So you guys be patient. As you are able, I invite you to come and lay hands on someone who is here. And for all of you to lay hands on one another and let us pray for them. Eternal God, you have trusted us with the message of your power, grace, justice, and love. Provide for us your guidance that we may be teachers and learners together. Believing that you are in our midst, we set apart those who would serve in our preschool. May they serve you in nurturing the spiritual growth of all who are entrusted in their care. Bless each one gathered before us, enabling them to be channels of your grace. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now to the congregation, will you join? We pledge ourselves to pray for you and for the ministry of our preschool. We pledge ourselves to enable, encourage, and love you in this ministry, praying for you and your students. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all for sharing your gifts. So Miss Kristen is our Director of Family Ministries and she's traveling and she's with family in Kansas City and Val Janilla, our Children's Ministry Coordinator, had surgery this past week and is recovering in the hospital and so they are greatly missed today not to be with us and also Lexi Parrish isn't with us but here's our amazing, our amazing family ministry team. So Lene, our preschool director, is going to offer the prayer for the backpacks. It's good to see you today. How many of you have felt scared going to school? How many of you have felt nervous going to school? How many of you love going to school? Awesome. Do you know... That in all of those emotions, God is in them. And God loves you through those emotions and can help you feel them even, right? Those come from God. And so as you face your new year in school or in your role as a learner, I want to pray for you so that you can listen to God, and feel God's presence in your day, and have a successful year. Does that sound good? All right. Can you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, 
I ask your blessing upon each of our children and families, as well as our educators. This school year, may they be curious and kind, gentle and strong, brave and loving. Along with the backpack, I also want to share a blessing with you. A blessing is something that you receive so you can open your hands like you are already ready to receive a special gift. God of fresh starts and new beginnings, we bring ourselves, our big feelings, and our backpacks, lunch boxes, to you. In our backpacks, we carry blank pages, sharpened pencils, pointy crayons, and in our hearts, we carry big feelings, unanswered questions, and hopeful expectations. There are endless possibilities of what this new year might bring, of what we might learn, who we might who we might become. God, our friend who is always with us, be with us through it all. Be with us as we ride the bus. Be with us as we walk. Be with us as we buckle seatbelts, zip up jackets, and tie shoes. Maybe learn to tie shoes. However we get there and whatever we wear, bless this journey into something new. And for the grown-ups going back to school, or supporting our learners. God, be with them too. Thank you for our teachers, helpers, caregivers, and leaders, and for all they do to help us learn and grow. God, our friend who's full of wonder, fill their hearts and bless their hands. Amen. All right, and you get to sit right where you are. Um, usually Miss Kristen does this, but like I mentioned, she's on vacation. So for the month of September, we've been looking at the faith word of creativity. Greetings, friends. It's Carly. In our scripture, we are still walking through this amazing story of God's creativity. God already made different times called night and day. God had already created homes for living things, both of the land and the sea. Then God filled these places with plants and animals of all kinds. And then God created human beings. That's us. Have you ever thought you were an expression of God's creativity? When you look in the mirror, what do you see? God sees someone good. You are good. When God created humans, God created them in God's own image. What does that mean? Take a deep breath in and release it. It means God's breath is inside you. The coolest thing is that God didn't just randomly put humans here. We were put here with a responsibility. We were given the opportunity to be in charge, not to boss everything around, but to take care of it. We are to care for each other, the earth, the plants and animals, and everything else on this earth. Wow, that can seem like a lot. But when we work on it together and we all take a piece of the responsibility, we can really care for all living things. In my house, my mom makes me and my two siblings all clean the house as our chore. When one of us doesn't help, it makes so much more work for the other two and sometimes it's too much to handle. When everyone doesn't help, the dishes don't get clean or the towels don't get folded. It's our responsibility to help care for our home and it's so much better when we work on it together. When we all work together, our house is taken care of and it's a great place for us to be. God gave all of us the responsibility to take care of the home that we all share, the earth. The earth is so beautiful and we get to be a part of the story of creation. Our amazing job is to take care of all the living things in the earth, including each other. How can you help care for the earth and the living things in it? It would be much better if we can all play a part. Now, it's time for you to wonder. You know, worship has been just so awesome already today. First, we shared those, that beautiful music choir. I cannot thank you enough. And then to see all the children up here and to be reminded of the work we're doing with them through the preschool, God has truly blessed us. 
if I invite, as you feel blessed, find, ask God how you can share that blessing through our gifts and our offerings. So now as we listen again to some beautiful music, our ushers will pass through us to, to, to uh, allow us to offer God our gifts. you have blessed us and we ask now for your blessing upon these gifts we bring to you make them be for the world a blessing amen
Good morning. If you haven't been able to tell, I have fought an upper respiratory all this week. And finally crying uncle and calling the doctor for some drugs. But if I cough or have a problem, I hope you will forgive me. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So this month we have been exploring prayer. And today we are looking at the prayer that Jesus gave us when his disciples said to him, teach us to pray. On a hill in modern Jerusalem is a chapel that is dedicated to that prayer, which we call the Lord's Prayer. Tradition says that it is on this hill that the disciples asked that question and that Jesus complied with the prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. On the walls throughout the courtyard and chapel are renditions of the Lord's Prayer in the languages of the earth, English, Spanish, Russian, Tongalese, Swahili, Japanese. There are over 140 and more are always being added. It is a reminder that when we pray this prayer, we are truly praying with all Christians in a prayer that belongs to none of us and yet all of us and first of all to Christ. Author Richard Foster writes, it is lifted up to God every, in every conceivable setting. It rises from the altars of the great cathedrals and from obscure shanties in unknown places. It is spoken both by children and kings. It is prayed at weddings and deathbeds alike. The rich and the poor, the intelligent and the illiterate, the simple and the wise, all speak forth this prayer. It is, though, a prayer that we often take for granted. Those of us who have been in the church most of our lives say it almost without thinking about it. Can you remember when you first said this prayer? Do you remember learning it? Or has it always just been there? Sadly, we're in danger of losing that. Many contemporary praise and worship services of the last 40 years have rebelled against what they considered rote ritual in worship and jettisoned a lot of traditional components and unfortunately that has included the Lord's Prayer. Now they have a point. We have become too comfortable and we say things without really thinking, without understanding. But I also think they've gone too far. A whole generation has grown up in the church without knowing this prayer. So today we ask the same thing that the disciples asked. Lord, teach us to pray. And we start, as Jesus did, with the prayer that he taught his disciples. Let's hear that prayer from Luke. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. And we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. I think as we talk about this, we will find that this prayer is harder to pray than we think. That it is not something we should rush through or take for granted. First, the Lord's Prayer is a petitionary prayer. What is that? A petitionary prayer is one in which we ask for things for ourselves. We make petitions. And there are three things that we ask for in this prayer for ourselves. We ask God to give, we ask God to forgive, and we ask God to deliver. We ask God to give us our daily bread. 
Notice that we don't ask for greatness or grand things. We ask instead for the essential of life. Bread. Bread to live. Is this request sufficient? Do you take for granted that there will be at least some bread in the house? Consider for a moment what you are going to have for lunch. And I happen to know what the dinner bells have set up for us for for fellowship time afterwards, and there will be bread. But maybe you're going out or eating in. Would you think yourself well-fed if you ate nothing but bread for lunch? Now, some of you with young children, the answer for them is yes. But if you had nothing but bread for lunch, for dinner, for all your meals, wouldn't you like to add to this prayer and ask for some meat and vegetables too? Maybe a little chocolate to boot? Diets of just bread are reserved for prisoners in solitary confinement. Jesus ate more than bread. The gospels tell us he he had fish and lamb and he drank wine. And yet he told us to ask for bread. Simple and humbling. Reminding you and me how rich our tables are. How much grace God has given to each of us in those items that we fill our tables with that go beyond just bread. The next petition in the Lord's Prayer is our asking God for forgiveness. Yet the request comes with a catch. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others their trespasses against us. Some translations say debts. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Others say sins. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. This is a conditional request. And Richard Foster, I mentioned earlier, struggles with this in part of his book on prayer. And his insights hit home with me. You see, God is ready to forgive. That's clear throughout the Bible. The condition on forgiveness is not about God's willingness to forgive. And God does not need us to be good to act. I mean, Jesus tells us that God so loved the world that he sent his son to save it, not condemn it. And Paul reminds us that Paul died for us while we were yet sinners, proving God's love for us. And as we say during our communion liturgy, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. So why not just ask God to forgive? Why do we need to forgive others too? Won't God take care of that and forgive them when they ask? Well, Foster points out that when we hold on to our angerness and bitterness and resentment, when we cannot forgive, we also cannot freely receive God's forgiveness. We must give in order to receive. Or as he writes, if my fists are clenched and my arms folded tightly against myself, I cannot hold anything. The giving of forgiveness breaks the hold of bitterness on our lives, ends the need for retribution, loosens our arms, and opens our hearts. Next time you pray this prayer, as part of your prayer time, pause on this part. Think of those against whom Maybe you are angry or hold a grudge who have hurt you. Perhaps you're not ready to forgive. 
Perhaps all you can do is ask God to soften your heart toward those who have wronged you. Now, the last petition is to deliver. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation, right? Listen to that. We think, is God leading us into temptation? No, the question is, the, the petition is, lead us not into temptation. Lead us away from temptation. I don't know about you. I don't need any leading into temptation. My temptation is to amuse myself rather than do what I know is needed work or the dishes or cooking or writing sermons it does not take much to tempt me away from my responsibilities my i live by the motto why do today what you can put off altogether <laughs> don't get me wrong I, I fulfill my responsibilities but i am tempted so in this prayer i ask god to deliver me from myself to be that voice that says, you know what is right. You know what is needed. It's like the old cartoons where the devil sits on one shoulder and the angel sits on the other. Here I ask God to be the angel on my shoulder, helping me be true to being the disciple he has called me to be. And we say, deliver us from evil. I think that's even more important in our world than even in Jesus' time. I mean, the evils we confront are no different from the ones he knew. But we are so immune to the images of death and violence that we don't even notice the evil that sneaks up on us. I want God to deliver me from the evils of terrorism and carjacking and assault. But I also want God to deliver me from the evil of indifference, gossip, and hard-heartedness. <coughs> the Lord's Prayer is also an intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is asking for others, not yourself. <coughs> most of the prayer, prayer requests that I will be sharing with you in a moment are intercessory prayers. So where in the Lord's Prayer do you hear us praying on behalf of others? It's in the very language of the prayer. You see, the language is always plural. Our Father who art in heaven, give us our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation. We do not pray for ourselves alone, but the community and even the world. And those intercessions should convict us. As we pray for our daily bread, do you ever consider how many do not have that humble meal? I'm so grateful that Steve has brought food into the sanctuary to be available for those who may be hungry. Author N.T. Wright says, it is impossible truly to pray for our daily bread or tomorrow's bread today without being horribly aware of the millions who didn't have bread yesterday, don't have any today, and in human terms are unlikely to have any tomorrow either. It seems a cheap grace to pray, give us our daily bread when I know where my bread is coming from, but I leave it up to God to figure out where your bread is coming from. If I see hunger or know of hunger and choose not to respond in some way, then I, when I say us in the prayer, it's a bit like the Queen of England saying, we are not amused. I'm really only talking about me not we. And finally, on, on the heels of last week's sermon about praying boldly, the Lord's Prayer is a bold prayer. Jesus instructs us to pray boldly. Notice there's no flowery language here. There's no please, if it be thy will. There are simple imperatives. Give us, forgive us, deliver us. Perhaps that's why immediately after this teaching them this 
simple prayer, he included a strange parable about neighbors and the right of prayer. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is a friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give how much more the Heavenly Father gives the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Now, you and I probably find this a strange story. I mean, if unexpected guests arrive, we can always find some coffee or tea to offer them. Our rules of hospitality are very different from, what, from that of the Middle East, even to this day. Writer Philip Yancey includes a story in his book about prayer of a, a, a Protestant missionary a Presbyterian, in Lebanon. He told this story that villagers frequently borrowed from each other in hospitality emergencies. They'd go to their neighbors and collect stuff. While living in primitive Middle Eastern villages, we discovered to our amazements that this custom of rounding up from the neighbors something adequate for the guests extended even to us when we were the guests we would accept an invitation to a meal clear across the village and arrive to eat from our own dishes, which the villagers had quietly borrowed from our cook. In Jesus' story, the neighbor being asked for help initially refuses. It is his friend's persistence that eventually rouses him. Yancey concludes that we should pray like a salesman with his foot wedged in the door opening like a wrestler who has opponent, his opponent in a headlock and won't let go. And Jesus promises that God will hear and respond. For ours is a God who does not slumber or sleep, but watches over us, who knows how to give us the good things we need. And if it feels like God has nodded off or gotten distracted with some other pressing concern, keep knocking on that door. Keep calling out God's name. Strive on like that persistent and shameless neighbor who would not stop asking. Next week, we are going to explore that question about what to do when we ask and it doesn't feel like God answers when we seek and God seems to be hiding. Until then, keep praying with boldness and persistence as Jesus taught us to pray. Amen. Now we get to practice what we just heard through our time of prayer. And the focus is going to be on the Lord's Prayer, but it's going to be a little bit different. Today, you get, you get to listen to it, and you can pray in silence with me. We're going to begin with our prayer chorus, and then there will be our time of intercessory prayer, which I'll invite you to help me lift up the prayer requests that we've received. And then afterwards, as our congregational prayer, I'll be praying the Lord's Prayer as prayed by St. Francis of Assisi. And then finally, we will close with our singing the prayer chorus again. Let us sing.
Let us pray. Lord, we pray, uh, lift up Sharon Wass, praising you that she is off a ventilator now and at home. You answered our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for Janet as she will have a breast cancer surgery this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for Val as she recovers from her surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for Shirley and Ed and all of his family as they determine the right place for Shirley to receive care and to gain strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, we pray for the farmers and those in agriculture in our community. We pray for a good and safe har harvest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Our Father most holy, our creator and redeemer, our savior and our comforter, who art in heaven with the angels and the saints, giving them light to know you, since you, Lord, are light, setting them afire to love you, since you, Lord, are love, dwelling in them and giving them fullness of joy, since you, Lord, are the supreme, eternal good, and all good comes from you. Hallowed be thy name. May we grow to know you better and better, and so appreciate the extent of your favors, the scope of your promises, the sublimity of your majesty, and the profundity of your judgments. Thy kingdom come, so that you may reign in us by your grace and bring us to your kingdom, where we shall see you clearly, love you perfectly, and happy in your company, enjoy you forever. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, so that we may love you with all our heart, by always having you in mind, with all our soul, by always longing for you, with all of our mind, by determining to seek your glory in everything, and with all our strength of body and soul, by lovingly serving you alone. May we love our neighbors as ourselves and encourage them all to love you by bearing our share in the joys and sorrows of others while giving offense to no one. Give us this day our daily bread, your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may remember and appreciate how much he loved us and everything he said and did and suffered. And forgive us our trespasses in your immeasurable mercy by virtue of the passion of your Son as we forgive those who trespass against us. And if we do not forgive perfectly, Lord, make us forgive perfectly, so that for love of you, we may really forgive our enemies and fervently pray to you for them, returning no one evil for evil, but trying to serve you in everyone. And lead us not into temptation, be it hidden or obvious, sudden or persistent, but deliver us from evil, past, present, or future. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. closing hymn is Trading My Sorrows.